hello my wonderful people welcome back to my channel before we proceed with this very short video i want to thank my recent subscribers my old subscribers i thank you so much god will bless you for supporting the channel and for those of you who just visiting my channel for the first time please support the channel by subscribing share the news Hit the red button so that each time I publish new news, you'll be notified immediately. God will bless you as you do so. Without wasting so much of your time, I want you to first of all watch this video, this short video, from the so-called, these people that call themselves Arewa women. After which, we'll continue discussion about this short video. So, to me, I am I'm not so surprised about the attitude of these Fulani women. But watch first. We'll continue. Predicament of northern people in the southern part of Nigeria. Jamia Martin Ariwa, our stand. Our beloved country, Nigeria, is today sadly at a precipice. The northern part of Nigeria has become the epicenter of perennial crisis of epic proportions from all fronts. The north, as we know it, is rich in culture and tradition and endowed with untapped human and natural resources that has the propensity to propel Nigeria as a superpower as envisaged by our founding fathers. Regrettably, for the past 12 years, the North has been under a relentless onslaught by Boko Haram insurgents and of recent incessant banditry, herders farmers clashes of unknown origin with its attendant impact on the social economic development of the country, of the region and the country at large. This is the situation the North has found itself in today's 21st century. To further compound matters, northerners are now profiled, attacked, intimidated, killed, and often receive hostile reception in the southwest and the southeast geopolitical zones. We are all witnesses to the recent murder and orchestrated destruction of shops, properties belonging to northerners at Shasha Market and Igongong community in Oyo State and the incineration of a trailer load of cattle and foodstuff from the north in Anambra state. It is instructive to note that since the creation of the Nigerian state, the north has always welcomed and accommodated people from all parts of the country to live in peace and harmony and go about their businesses without let or hindrance. There also has been numerous intermarriages, religious connectivity and affiliations of both Christian and Muslim faiths in the spirit of peaceful coexistence in an effort to build a united prosperous nation that is what our culture and tradition has taught us we didn't choose to be in nigeria but god in his infinite wisdom has brought to all, has brought us together ladies and gentlemen the question to ask at this juncture is this why the blatant hatred for northerners is this the reward for being accommodating why can't the concerned southerners if i may say so reciprocate the gesture to live in peace with northerners in their midst? Or is there a conspiracy theory to deprive us of developing and send us into oblivion? Let me make it clear, we are not begging or running in cap in hand for handouts. History has recorded that the North has contributed to the development of this country even before the oil boom, of which recent discoveries in alternative sources of energy has become a priority rather than continued dependence on oil as a priced commodity as others would have wanted in the foreseeable future. Today, we affirm that enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough, enough, is, enough. enough is enough. Enough is enough. At home in the north, we are not spared. In some particular regions, geopolitical zones, we, where we feel we would be welcomed, we are targeted and not spared. This has to stop. 
we believe we are in a democracy with laid down procedures and processes to address national concerns or agitation of some sort. Today, the Jamia Martin Ariwa, the voice of the Northern woman, is calling on His Excellency, President Mohamed Buhari, and the leadership of the National Assembly to immediately consider the following options. One, we convene a national conference as a follow-up to, to the one held in 2014. Two, the issues of the Nigerian state has been a subject of discourse for some time now. We feel the concerns can be channeled through the elected representatives of the National Assembly to be thoroughly debated as required under a democratic dispensation. Or, number three, better still hold a referendum. Yeah. While commending the government for its untiring efforts to tackle the hydra-headed security challenges in the country today, we are convinced that the concerns being raised by certain sections of the country can be addressed in a civilized and peaceful manner than resorting to violence killings, etc., to forestall a total breakdown of law and order which could lead to a precarious situation we all don't pray for, God forbid. The well-known tolerance and perseverance of the North should not be taken for granted. I am not surprised. And why I am not surprised, I will explain. Recently, Northern Elders Forum came out and gave press statement that that the federal government should allow Igbo to have their nation, crying that their people, the Northerners, are being killed in the east. You see these women. They to, they have come out because their husbands instructed them to do so. To claim that Northerners are being killed in the South. So, these people, each time these herdsmen kill people, you will never see them say condemn it. You will never hear them say anything about the killings of their own people in South. They are killing our own people in our own in our own soil with their Fulani herdsmen, with their terrorists, all of them together, with their terrorists in army uniform. Killing our people. They will never come out to condemn it. But the moment you try to defend yourself, and in course of defending yourself, one of them fall victim. All of, they will come, they will start to shout, oh. The Satanists are killing their people. You see how they roll? Do you see how these people roll? All this while, they have been killing people in their own northern state, abducting children that are in schools, at the universities. You will never see these people to come out and protest. That is to tell you that both the young, the old, and the politicians of this Fulani Caliphate, they are all in the same game. All of them are in the same game. They know what they are doing. They are the ones that are crying foul. But they have been killing all this while. If any time you try to resist them, that is why you will see army and police. They will just come in and stop you. The time their own people will be killing, you will not see any police, you will not see any army. But the moment the indigenous try to resist, police will come, army will come. All of them are in the same game together. This woman said there are three options which she demanded from the government. The first one is no option at all because we've had the 2014 National Conference. It's the same this Arewa Caliphate government that threw it in dustbin. Say they are not going to implement it. So no further conference. None is not acceptable to us from the south. Number two. She recommended that there is National Assembly where you can make debate. And that one is not also an option because they skewed the National Assembly so that the north 
is the majority. There is nothing the South will do that they, they in the North will not win. They created states such that they have more states in the North than the South. They created local governments in such that they have more local government in the North than the South. They, they from the North created all these things. And each time they say, oh, go to National Assembly because we are in democracy. Because they have skewed everything in their favor. So that option, nobody is interested. From the South, we are not interested. The last option is referendum. That is what we want. We have to make a referendum. Those who want to remain in that country as part of Nigeria should stay. Vote for Nigeria and those who want to leave we vote that they want to leave. We, the Biafrans, we want to leave. This is what we have been demanding for. And they call us what? Terrorists. Just for carrying placards and be asking for referendum. You kid our boys, you kid our girls, you kid our men, you kid our women. Because we are asking for a referendum. But now, you are asking for the same thing. I didn't see army here to come and treat you or to come and arrest you because if it's our Biafran women now, they will come and arrest them and put them in cell. Anyway, what we want is referendum. Any other option? No. Stop lying to the world that Southerners are killing Northerners in the South. Stop these lies. We are only chasing away those terrorists you sent to our forests. That is where we are battling, especially in the East. If we see them in our forests, they will go down. They should leave our forests. Those terrorists you send here, those your husband you send their terrorists sent to our side, they are the ones who are doing what? Fighting. Because they are killing and raping our women, killing our, our children, killing our men. We don't want them in our forests. Call them back to their north. Call them back to your north. Now it's time for resistance. We have to resist this your terrorists you sent to us. We resist them now. That is, you can never stop us from defending our land.